And welcome back. Our next guest is a speaker, author, and coach, and joins us to share her story and journey toward healing. We welcome Dawn Breed into the show. Dawn, welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Bob. I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad you're here, too, because you have a, you not only have a book, you're an author, and you're a coach, but you have a deeply rooted story that, um, that you've been going through, and you put it all on paper. You put the pen to the paper, yes. and it was sort of like a therapy for you. Yes. Tell us about this story. Um, I've been speaking now since, like, 1990, so I could not have told my story in any four-hour period, so I had to put it in a book. Yeah. And literally, my story encompasses romance, suspense, intrigue, and murder. Romance, suspense, intrigue, and murder. Inspiration, wow. motivation, so self-help, and education. And this is real. This is real. Yeah. It's been verified. Yes. I've, had, I've got numerous uh, newspaper articles that have researched and verified my story. So, yes, it's been verified. Yeah. And just going through, I had to make sure the first thing, and that's why the name of my book is called Remember to Breathe, the first thing I had to learn to do was breathe. Because when we go through a crisis or a tragedy, uh -huh. it literally takes our breath away. Yes. And, while and sometimes you don't really know what you're going through while you're in it. No, you don't. No, you don't. But the most important thing is not to let it overwhelm you. And most importantly, while breathing is um, involuntary, ours becomes fragmented and short. Yeah. So you start noticing your breathing. Absolutely. And, and that, that's an indication that there's a situation, there's a problem. Absolutely. Yeah. So literally, one of the things I talk about when I talk about murder was my son's father killed my son. Oh my and God. when my son was on life support, I literally was waiting with bated breath while they did all the tests to see if there was any brain activity. And as they did the last test, I was sitting there praying and just hoping that he would give us a sign, but he didn't. So and it, I it literally your, fell to the floor. Your husband and your son. Mm -hmm. What happened? He poisoned him with cyanide and ammonia. And the police were literally right outside the bedroom door. So the police literally picked my son up and rushed him to the hospital. And unfortunately, because they can't smell cyanide, they weren't able to antidote it. And my son was on life support for two days. So going through that, literally, when they, my friends picked me up off the floor, I had to, I just said to myself, I just need to breathe. Yeah. That's all I could do. Don't mm -hmm. think, just breathe. And what was the reason for, for that? What, what took place before that point? Um, I'm a domestic violence survivor. So many times people thought that he was going to hurt me and not him. He did attempt to slit my throat that same day. And I was actually God. at the hospital when they brought him in. But this, I just saw this blur run mm -hmm. through. And I didn't realize that they had my son. My son was three and a half years old. And just going through that, I knew that I was going to need some help. Because I always say to people, it's okay, get counseling, get help. And that's the first thing I wanted to do was find me a Christian psychologist that would understand what I was going through. Yeah. But I knew I was going to get through it, but I knew I was not going to get through it alone. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important that we always find someone to talk to. And, and of course, this prompted you to, to put the pen to the paper. You yes. Said, I have to do something about this. Yes. Did and you get the therapy? The, first, yes, I did. This the Absolutely. Therapy? No, therapy was first. Therapy was first, and ironically, I was one week pregnant with my second son. <sighs> Different father. So my second son is now 21, yeah. and he is now HIV negative. So I was diagnosed while I was pregnant with my first son. And all the while I've been speaking, I always said, I think my son's father was negative. And when a newspaper reporter was in re researching my story, she found out that he actually lied. He was positive. So I didn't know that I had gotten it from him. Yeah. So when I talk about remembering to breathe, the next thing I talk about is faith and perseverance because we have to learn to put one mm. foot in front of the other. Things God are designed... gave us two feet, put one foot in front of the other. Yes. And step to what you need to do to accomplish what you, what you want. Absolutely. Yeah. Things are designed sometimes to take us out, but mm. we have a choice. And I made the choice that I was going to rely on my faith mm -hmm. and I was going to move forward. Not an easy decision to make, but I just knew, and then sometimes I just had to sit back, relax, 
and breathe. This is big. I'm glad you came through it. This is a big help. Where can we go for more information on, on your book and, and your story? Uh, Dawn Breeden, B R E E D O N. Let's call it not history, but her story. Yes, that's her story. Yeah. Dawn Breeden, B R E E D O N dot com. My email is dawn at dawnbreeden dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, my next speaking engagement, most of the time I don't have public speaking engagements, uh -huh. but my next one is actually April 23rd at the Women's Rights Information Center in Inglewood, New Jersey. And that will be April 23rd at 6 p.m. Dawnbreeding.com. Yes. Give Dawn a big round of applause, everybody. Speaker, author, and coach. Thank you for sharing that. You thank know. you so much. And I'm glad, you know, that uh, you're and putting this everything is out. For you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I will read it and cherish it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Right, good luck to you. We have to take a quick break, but uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more open.